but there are people god is raising to become mighty vessels i just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ welcome to christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith-based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed Congratulations, Aquaibon State, on your 35th anniversary. I celebrate with you. Um, it will only be for you from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your Excellency, Governor Emmanuel Udom, thank you very much for the invite. I appreciate everyone. I stand on the existing protocol and... Um, I ask that the Lord himself will bless our hearts even as we listen to the word in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to hear you speak to us. Thank you for 35 years of your faithfulness in this state. And Lord, I pray that you will charge our hearts and give us wisdom even through your word that the moments we share together from the scripture will be most enlightening and that you will challenge us to even press further. We decree and declare that at the end of this sermon, Jesus himself will be revealed and glorified. For in Jesus' name I pray. May I please request that you lend me your attention for the next few minutes. I believe strongly with all my heart that what we are about to hear will change and challenge us i believe in the power of the word of god and i believe that the word of god makes the wisdom that comes from the word of god grants us the instruction and the intelligence to make constructive progress and so the lord has put something in my heart to share even on this occasion in vain he says father that it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep that means if god does not come to help a man your efforts will only amount to futility and frustration reason number one why we must look unto god setting our gaze upon him and relying upon his wisdom and his ability the second reason why the Bible encourages us to look unto Jesus is found in Romans chapter 9 and verse 16. Romans 9, 16. Here's what the Bible says, and I quote again. It says, It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. Our world is full of people who had everything in place politically, intellectually, academically, and so on and so forth. And within a moment, issues happened around lives that was within or beyond their control and ended their lives, ended their relevance overnight. It is pride for any man to believe he can be self-sufficient outside of the mercy and the assistance of the God of heaven. If we are together, say amen. amen. So it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. A very interesting story comes to mind in 2 Kings chapter 5 from verse 6 and 7. The Bible talks about a man called Naaman. He said he was a valiant man. He was a captain of the Syrian army, but he had a deformity. He was leprous. And then one time by the, the uh, admonition of the little slave girl that served his wife, 
she beckoned on him to meet a prophet in Israel who would be able to cure him of his leprosy. And on hearing that the king of Syria, the Bible records, wrote a letter to the king of Israel. He said, be sure to heal this man for me. I want to read verse 6 and 7. When the king of Israel received that letter, he made a very instructive statement. He said, am I God that I have the ability to heal this man on my own? And he said, this king is only looking for trouble. When I read that scripture, it blessed me because the man was a king. And you know that kings are people of authority and stature and influence. And yet this man had the unashamedness to admit that this kind of result only resides within the power of God. It is my prayer that the higher we rise, the more we acknowledge that no matter how great we are, we are still limited. It will only take God and his power and his wisdom to become the completion of our lives. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Why do we need to look unto Jesus as the Bible mandates? Psalm 62 and verse 11. Here's what the Bible says. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belongs to God. Can we say that acquire bomb? One more, one to go. Power belongs to God. Say it one more time, please. Power belongs to God. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power if any man rises, it is because God lifted him. If any man excels, it is because God granted him the grace. The Bible speaks about a man called Uzziah in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. When you read from verse 5, the Bible says, For as long as he sought the Lord, he says the Lord made him to prosper. For as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. Verse 15 of that same scripture said he became great and mighty because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. Power belongs to God. In Psalm 113, Psalm 113, it's a long reading just right for reference. Verse 1 to 9, Psalm 113, verse 1 to 9. The Bible there says that God raises the poor from the dunghill and places him above in a place of honor and nobility. So this God, Jesus Christ, that the Bible mandates that we look upon is a lifter. He can lift men from any background regardless the conclusion of men. This is one profound quality about the God that we serve. He is not only a great God, it is within his power to enthrone and even dethrone. In Psalm 18 and verse 29, I hope you love scriptures. Psalm 18 and verse 29. It says, by you I can run through a troop. And by my God I can leap over a wall. Profound statement. By you I can run through a troop. It is not given to a man to run through a troop. A troop there represents a resistance. But by you, I can run through a troop. He says, by my God, I can leap over a wall. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Exodus chapter 15, Exodus chapter 15, from verse 11 to 19, it is called the song of Miriam. This was after the nation of Israel crossed through the Red Sea on dry land. Miriam was so touched by that experience and she penned down a few things. And she said, who is like unto you? And she began to describe the grace and the majesty of God. It says, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. That the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Only the God of heaven is able to part the sea and grant men access on dry land. Why does the Bible mandate that we look unto Jesus? Are we still together? 
in second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 paul was admonishing the church in corinth and this is what he had to say he said as we behold him he says and we with unveiled face beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed when we look unto him and behold him we are changed from a version that represents shame and reproach to a version that represents dignity and honor when we look unto jesus we never remain in shame now please listen very carefully this is a message for the people of Aquaibom, but then it extends to as many who are listening and following I can guarantee you by the integrity of God's word that nobody looks unto Jesus sincerely and wholeheartedly and remains in shame. Uh -uh. It may take time, but the God of heaven who is a lifter and a blesser will always turn your night today. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So as we behold him, we are changed. When a poor man beholds him, he is changed. When a sick man beholds him, he is changed. When a mediocre and a weak man beholds him, he is changed. And the Bible says we are changed into the very image that we are looking upon. Why does the Bible mandate that we look unto Jesus? The Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. Now listen, this is very powerful. The author means the one who originates and starts. The finisher is one who supervises its safe conclusion. The Bible says Jesus Christ is author and finisher. That can be true for an individual. That can be true for a family. That can be true for a career person. That can be true for a state. That can be true for a nation. Now listen, there are many people who allow Jesus Christ to be author of their lives, but they never work with him to be finisher. There are others who never allow him to be author, but eventually they discover their mistakes and they allow him to be finisher. My charge is that it is best for an individual to allow the God of the Bible, even Jesus, to be author and finisher. The author of your life, the finisher of your destiny. The author of Aquaibom, the finisher of your destiny. The author of every political career, educational career, family career, and the finisher of the same. This is what the Bible mandates. In 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, 1 and verse 12 2nd timothy 1 and verse 12 here's what paul says speaking to his son timothy he says but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him please look up god has the power to protect to pros to preserve and to keep but he only keeps what it is committed unto him. He does not keep what is available. He does not keep what you want to be protected. He only keeps what is committed unto him against that day. Hallelujah. God is able to keep. God is able to protect. He is able to keep a man's legacy. He is able to keep a man's influence. He is able to keep a man's relevance. He is able to give you longevity, provided you commit unto him. Committing unto God demands humility on your own part. That you realize and acknowledge that unassisted I am limited. And sincerely without any, any playing with words, I, I want to sincerely at this juncture honor his excellency for his outspoken dependence on the God of heaven, even in governance. It is, it is worthy of commendation, even in a state like this. I think we should give him a good, God bless you for that. Hallelujah. Now, listen, you know that I am not a politician. I don't do politics. I am a man of God a communicator of truth and righteousness and as far as my eyes can see if it is worthy of commendation i will commend with honor 
if it is worthy of rebuke i will rebuke in love this is my assignment as a man of god so that which is worthy of commendation even his excellency's submission to the governing authority of christ to draw wisdom to draw intelligence i say it again that it is worthy of commendation hallelujah let me try to conclude governments will come and go leaders will come and go businessmen will come and go kings will come and go investors will come and go politicians will come and go every one of us here including the preacher will come and go please hear me while you rejoice i hope you are listening to me everyone will come and go the awareness of the transitory nature of man should give us a level of wisdom and intelligence it says oh teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom that means there is a level of wisdom and intelligence that comes into the heart of a man when you take uh, cognizance to the fact that no matter how long I stay whether in politics whether in business even as royalty it is given unto men to only be within the space of their relevance for a season the law of seasons is a law that comes upon all men what does that mean it means then that to live an impactful life you must be governed by three things this is my charge respectfully speaking to his excellency as he approaches the final days of his tenure as governor of Akwa Ibom state this is also a charge that extends to every politician every businessman every man of god and indeed every wonderful son and daughter of the soil to live a very meaningful life you must be governed by three factors number one the fear of the lord the basis for an excelling life is the fear of the Lord. The Bible clearly says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That when an individual coordinates his life, making reference to his fear for God, the word fear there means reverence. It is important that we live our lives to honor God, knowing that one day we will stand before God. Number two, you must be guided by conscience conscience number three you must be guided by a sense of posterity and legacy back in the seminary we used to sing a song that says thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling it says only remembered by what we have done we are not the first to be in this position any position you choose at all and we will not be the last in this state leaders will come and go in this state business people will come and go like i said earlier in this nation leaders will come and go my charge with all every sense of respect and honor to the leaders the excellencies here present the men the women of god the businessmen stakeholders captains of industry is that we must make up our minds that we will leave a legacy that is worth it if and when we are no longer here hallelujah i made up my mind as a man of god that i would live my life serving the purposes of god with sincerity and truth making my own contributions as far as the revelation of jesus is concerned and helping to contribute the quota that i can make in nation building without any sense of prejudice or bias with a sense of conscience and the fear of the lord this has been my creed and it remains so i count it an honor to be here to celebrate with akwai bomb on this 35th anniversary and it is my prayer and prophetic declaration that by 70 we will still be here to celebrate in the name of jesus christ we're going to do two things with the time I have left before 
I resort back to my seat. And please, I want you to lend me your attention one more time. I am a man of God and a preacher. That means I believe in Jesus Christ and his entire plan. And every opportunity that God provides for me to share with God's people, it is always an opportunity to not only reveal Jesus, but to connect someone back to Jesus who is the God of the Bible. The Bible already told us to look unto Jesus. He calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible also says that God will only keep that which is committed unto him. I believe with all my heart that standing and sitting here among the thousands of people and the thousands watching by way of television or the internet, I believe there is someone in this place who is saying, Apostle, on hearing you teach, I confess that I do not know Jesus. This Jesus you are talking about, I have heard about him from preachers. I have heard about him from my governor. I have heard about him from visionary leaders. I've heard about him maybe by way of television or internet. But I have not made a personal decision for Jesus. May I please request that you give me a two minutes allowance to make this call. Even if it is one person who would come to Jesus tonight and this day, I believe it will be an honor and a completion of a faithful assignment done. I do not want to just come and lend my voice with the beautiful people of Akwaibom and even His Excellency to celebrate the mighty hand of God over this state, which is a noble task. But I want to give an opportunity for someone and please hear me in making this call. It does not matter if you are a politician. It does not matter if you are a business person. It does not matter if you are a captain of industry. One day we are going to stand before this Jesus. The Bible clearly says that this same Jesus will return even as we have seen him ascend. He is the reason why we are celebrating 35 years. But I want you to know that one day this life will be over with all its activities scattered across are people who are being convicted of the holy spirit and i'm going to make an altar call right now i'm going to be counting one to five and i want to challenge someone on this 35th anniversary this is about the greatest gift we can give his majesty to draw souls to him there's someone young old rich poor male female who is saying apostle please give me one minute of this moment and let me make it right with jesus or you want to rededicate your life this is a service i'm going to count one to five for the sake of time and whether you are performing any function by the privilege of god's grace may i plead that you be relieved for a moment because this is a matter of destiny as i count one to five wherever you are you need jesus i please want you to come and stand right in front of me be very bold, be determined, be organized. You do not have to break the order. Are you ready? Let's celebrate them as they come. I begin my counting now. One. Akwai Boma, we celebrating salvation. Make sure you mean it as you come. Just play something for me in the background, anyone? Two. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Come, come to Jesus. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power. There is power. Come to Jesus. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift the voice, as we lift the voice in praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Hallelujah. Two more counts and we are done. Please let's hurry up so we walk with time. My life will be greatly impacted when I watched. 
a, a two minutes or three minutes obituary on television it was a slide of a man's entire lifetime from childhood to teenage to adulthood to midlife and the final moments before he died they captured those photos in a slide and it ran before my face and I literally saw a man's entire lifetime compressed within a minute it taught me again the brevity the deceptive brevity of this life it is wise to live your life knowing that after this life when all is said and done that you will make it right with Jesus when you are done in this life it will not matter again your political affiliation it will not matter again your religious affiliation it will not matter again your educational qualification and even your pedigree there will only there will be only one basis one basis for your excelling after this life your decision to honor jesus with your life i want to congratulate all of you who have made this bold decision to come it's my joy and honor to lead you to jesus and i pray that you do not forget this day in the name of jesus please may i request in honor of this prayer that we all rise i will pray with them and then by the privilege of priesthood speak over the state and i am done as far as my assignment is concerned may we please rise thank you very much for all of you who are in front let me request first and foremost that you lift your right hand high above your head if you can please say this prayer after me and for anyone who is watching by way of television you are watching through any of the television platforms or by way of internet jesus is speaking to you and this is an opportunity here in Aquaibom celebrating the 35th anniversary to make it right with this Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Today, at this 35th anniversary, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I willingly make you savior lord and king of my life i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today until forever i declare that i'm a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb I go forward ever and backward never. I am a child of God. Amen. Father, thank you for these ones. They have made this noble decision. And in the name of Jesus, the Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I present before you these ones and I pray that the grace that keeps will keep them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. And I declare that you go from glory to glory and grace to grace. For in Jesus' name we pray. May I please request that you return back to your seat rejoicing. Let's give them a big, big hand clap. Hallelujah. Now please, let's rise. Thank you for your patience. In one minute, I know that there's a prayer session coming. But in one minute, I want you to pray every good thing you have in your heart for Aquaibom in one minute just talk to the lord everything you would wish to happen for you i want you to pray that it happens to this dear state that it happens to the leadership that it happens to every son and daughter of the soil go ahead and pray without any religious bias whether you are muslim whether you are christian whether you are you know a traditionalist it does not matter this is the point of unity where we agree as citizens in this nation and particularly sons and daughters of the soil in one minute i'd like you to pray father bless aquaibom is someone praying lift aquaibom let this state go from glory to glory it will never retrogress go ahead and pray bless our children the youth in the name of jesus christ the national anthem says 
that the labor of our heroes past should not be in vain i like you to pray that the efforts that have been invested in this state for the past 35 years will not be aborted by any and all kinds of carelessness pray that the youth in this state will become visionary men young men and women they will grow to be leaders of global repute if someone praying pray for the businessmen pray for the clergy the veterans of the gospel that labor day and night to promote morality and righteousness within this state pray for the law enforcement agencies that the lord will preserve them all the arms of government for in jesus name we pray father thank you in the name of jesus for the privilege to bring your word and by the honor of priesthood i lend my voice together with every man and woman of god here to declare acquire bomb you will go from glory to glory acquire bomb you will go from grace to grace in the mighty name of jesus christ the lord will build you to be like a trophy even in this nation i decree and declare that it is well with this state i decree and declare that it is well with every son and every daughter in this state in the name of jesus christ you have celebrated god at 35 you will still celebrate him at 70 you will still celebrate him at 105 in the name of jesus christ one more time let me appreciate his excellency and the first lady and all who have extended this invite thank you for the honor of bringing the word the lord bless you in jesus name Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.